then uh, we have the concepts the vlan as the crystal said uh, that you know if we will not configure vlans we have one large broadcast away and even if we the vlan one because basically every uh, port will be the member of vlan one so vlan will one will be considered as the one large broadcast to me and i can correlate this example in the your microsoft windows network environment where if you will click windows network and then if you go to into the view world groups you will see so many computers are connected to your device so basically this is the concept you can correlate with the broadcast domain it is your computer is sending the broadcast everywhere uh, to find out what other hosts are connected with your host machine so this is how it is going to find automatically these all devices so to cut down this uh, broadcast uh, we use the concept of the vlan which is virtual local area network so we are virtually dividing uh, these broadcast domain into uh, sub domains like this one is another domain this one is another sub domain so here is the information about vlan a virtual lan is any broadcast domain that is partitioned and isolated in a computer network at the data link layer and we know data link layer we are talking about the layer 2 which operates uh, where uh, the switches operates vlan is equal to subnet logically cut down the broadcast and we know what subnet means if we have subnet like 192.168.1.1 and we have another subnet like 10.1.1.1 if this wants to communicate with this one on the same uh, lan environment it it will not be able to communicate because they are on different subnet so this is the same concept with the vlan we are logically partitioning our networks using vlan now Then we in, have in, yeah. in a in a real example most of the companies uses like similar um ip addresses for for example ab192168 1.1 then they will have 2.1 or 3.1 and they will kind of sometimes name it by floors right come on yes and yes, and, and and that's where that's just an ip address is being like you know being managed like that but then the, the, you will have this vlans like you know specifically for certain areas and yes. that's what this, this plays actually this plays a very big role currently in the way the modern networking works vlan is pretty much used everywhere these days yeah if i uh, quickly i i can give you example sorry so this switch let's say uh, we have uh, this is marketing department this is sales department and these are let's say the it department so with the help of vlan we can segregate these marketing departments with the sales department and the it department so if we put this marketing department under let's say the vlan has some kind of id let's say we assign vlan 10 to the marketing department we assign vlan 30 to our sales department and 50 to our it department so what will happen whatever the devices that are under vlan 10 they can communicate with each other happily but if this device want to communicate with this it machine 
it will not be able to because they are on, totally on a different VLANs. So you can see this is a one single broadcast domain. This is one single broadcast domain. This is one single. So we have three broadcast domain here. And they all can communicate in sales and IT can communicate with each other. But if they want to communicate, because since they are on a different VLAN, uh, they will not be able to. So this is logically we are partitioning these things. Okay, then we have uh, the default VLAN and native VLAN concepts. And the default VLAN I have already mentioned, it is like VLAN 1. And this is by default on your switches enabled. So this is default VLAN. Native VLAN. Uh, Sometimes it happens that if I give you example very quickly in our production environment. Uh, let's say we have a switch. And we have one computer device. And then uh, I don't have, let's make it voice over IP phone. Okay. Similarly, this, uh, this switch is connected to the PC. And this, you know, the PC, you are familiar, just voice over IP devices have the capability to connect uh, with the PC as well. Okay, so and the at the back they have this port where voice over IP device will be connected. And the same, if you just copy this one and paste here, we have a PC, then we have voice over IP device here. These devices, since belong to the Cisco, they understand the concept of VLAN or the VLAN tagging, like VLAN 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But these PCs are not belong to the Cisco. They do not have concept of VLAN taggings. Okay. So, for example, I can assign VLAN 10 to voice over IP here, VLAN 10 to this IP. And then if when I want to communicate, I can communicate using this switch because switch has the information about the VLAN 10 information. But this PC wants to communicate with this PC. And let's suppose we have not added kind of VLAN information here. Then what will happen? When this PC will send information, it will be discarded here because it does not have any kind of VLAN information. So in that scenario, we use the concept of native VLAN, which is what untagged packet. We can define any uh, VLAN as a native VLAN uh, when this PC want to send information to this PC too. When this switch will get this information, which is untagged, it will know that uh, this has no any VLAN tagging information. So I'm going to send to here. So these two computers can then communicate without having the information of VLAN. So that is the concept of native VLAN. We can make any VLAN like VLAN 100, let's suppose, as a native VLAN. Means this is a command in a switch we have to configure. We can tell the switch, you know, VLAN 100 belongs to the native VLAN, which means it is not going to have any kind of tagging information for this VLAN. So if you receive this information, just forward it to whatever the device or whatever the switch exists here. So this is how this PC can communicate with each other. And but these voice over IP will have some kind of VLAN information or the tagging, let's say 200, which will be tagged. And this will also be 200. So if I want to com communicate, uh, the switch has idea where VLAN 200 exists. So 
these two voice over ip can communicate with each other so this is the concept of native vlan and again i'm telling you you know uh, we are going to learn again about this native vlan uh, in a ccna so these are things all things are gonna overlap uh, in a ccna so here you just have to build the concept again if you didn't get what i'm saying you can go google it and just check what vlan native vlan is used for so this is a real case scenario where we use a vlan so i have made one uh, this is a real lab scenario i have implemented in my uh, production environment and what is saying we have uh, uh, let's suppose you are working as network admin three newly installed dsl modems need to be connected for the groups like marketing sales and finance so let's suppose we have dsl1 we have dsl2 and dsl3 modem we have one switch here we have one group which is marketing then we have one uh, group as a sales then we have one group finance i want to dedicate this modem to finance i want to dedicate this modem to sales and this to marketing so what is the scenario here what you can do for example we have assigned vlan 10 to the marketing group and we know this dsl will be connected to some port and this uh, sales modem will also be connected to this switch and the finance is also be connected so what we can do just need to do nothing we know this marketing is on a vlan 10 just assign this port to under, into the vlan 10 so this is how this dsl modem will connect and will give hand over ips to this marketing department similarly this sales department let's say this is under vlan 20 so assign this port uh, under vlan 20 so this will become one logical portion and this is how they will communicate with each other and similarly with the finance as well if you have given let's say 100 uh, to the finance vlan then assign the same port uh, to this modem under the vlan 100 and this is how they are going to communicate with each other with each other but they uh, will not be able to communicate with each other so you have to remember this thing for that you need a router okay and we will learn about how the communication can happen this is known as router on a stick or the multi layer switch so this uh these are the concept we are going to learn in ccna then we have another scenario we have multiple data standards in our organization how are you going to separate all of these standards let's suppose we have voice Core data, Wi-Fi servers, printers, etc. So this is the same concept. If the switch is uh, connected with, let's say, one printer here, we have the printer here. Then it has uh, some multiple, let's say, wireless devices, wireless LAN devices. Then it has uh, computers or the voice devices. So to segregate these all, you will. use the concept of vlan and you will make the part of voice vlan into let's say uh, vlan 100 uh, you can separate these uh, wireless lan with, with different vlan id and this printer with a different vlan let's say this is okay yeah and in, in, in real world examples with vlans like you may be working with something whether it's a phone device or maybe a PC and sometimes things are not working. Uh, it could be a port issue, maybe a issue with the hard hardware, and you're not sure about it because you don't have that kind of deep knowledge of you know certain things. This knowledge will then okay. At least I know I can take it out, put it in a different port. But what if that port was not configured for that specific finance or uh, let's say for yeah. uh, voice? 
So then, of course, you're stuck there, right? You can't just take a wire out, plug it into a, uh, another port, and you expect things are going to work. You may connect it first. It may not even work because that concept will we'll cover this later on. Maybe that's, uh, the whole port is disabled, and you're like plugging things in there. Okay, you don't understand that. That's something we'll cover. But maybe you plug it in, and you know it comes up, and it got, it got an IP address, but it's not working. That's because it's their VLAN concept. Uh, yeah. been... True. And let's suppose like this printer, you want to make uh, the part of this VLAN 200, but uh, you configured it wrong. So this is how you can go into the switch and you can verify, okay, this is connected with the 10. Now I want to change it to 200 to make this a part of this VLAN. So now they, they can communicate with each other. Okay. And uh, last but not least, unused ports and the management ports. Like, you know, uh, let's suppose uh, the switch has uh, 48 ports and let's say only 10 of them are consumed only. The rest of the ports are still open. So basically you are inviting the hacker here to play with these ports. So the best idea is create one separate VLAN, let's say VLAN 150 and add these all unused ports into this VLAN 50. Now you have segregated this VLAN 50. Now hacker, uh, he cannot uh, hop or he cannot reach to this VLAN 50 because this is in a separate area. So this is also one of the very important aspect uh, of the security uh, when we uh, talked about the switches.